once again another year has brought four months of sun and heat over Britain, seemingly forcing everyone, usually loud and annoying in the privacy of their own homes, into the street where I have to see them. It's too hot, I have no motivation, I'm irrationally angry at everything all the time, and basically, I really need some fucking cheering up. Flash games are something that occupied a huge part of my childhood and life, because I'm still a child. All of this, this, and this contributed massively to the man you see before you today, both for better and for mostly worse to be honest. And even with the choice I would not have spent it any other way. You hear all these nerds say how everything from the current indie scene to the MS-DOS era was the wild west of games, but in reality, in the real world they were Hitler's Germany in comparison to Newgrounds Flash scene, in fact a lot of the game series on Newgrounds for free I'd argue are better put together and higher quality than the majority of games you'd have to download the Steam client and pay for. One of these that was neither of those things but from my childhood and I loved and enjoyed regardless was the Ghostscape series of games. Calling it now, it will definitely be absolutely every single bit as good as I remember it being. Please. Sliding in from black, the only two things that we can be sure of is that there is escape, possibly consisting of at least one ghost. Also, I have no idea what the fuck bubble box is, but that was always a theme with Flash games I never understood. It seemed like the first site to host it somehow won the right to plaster their name all over it, leaving a huge fucking crater where the consistent style once stood. By the way, don't look at that. This game means a lot to me and I'm trying to make it look better than it is. They're really not making it fucking easy. A quick look at the credits is a phrase none of us have ever said in our lives, tells us that the whole game was made entirely by one man, one programmer, 3D artist, illustrator, and musician, presumably talented in every single one of those fields. Because I can tell you already, that doesn't include fucking spelling. The game starts by giving the misleading impression that it's just gonna be another haunted house flash game. Misleading because it isn't. It has puzzles as well. For the more intelligent audience with higher standards and who like to be challenged, the first one being getting into the fucking thing. If only I knew how. If only I had some way to break my way through these boards. A crowbar could be useful, but if only I knew for what. Look, when the game's only 10 minutes long, the difficulty curve might as well be a difficulty cliff. Leave it alone, me. Alright, hear me out, let me explain. Don't leave. I'd argue, granted against everyone, that this looks really good. The combination of the pre-rendered backgrounds, animated foreground, and everything in between makes the game look kind of timeless, and nowadays this is a style of its own. That's unlike the majority of Flash games that have that samey Flash vector look as a result of the engine they were developed in and not because it contributes anything, so it's both good and unique. Shut up. Because I'd also say that it stands up really well today, and although it's not as scary as it used to be, the muddiness and lighting of the backgrounds gives it a really nice atmosphere to house the scares in, even if they do lay it on a bit thick in some places. Don't do this. Like I tried desperately not to say, gameplay-wise it's a haunted house game. You're given a list of objectives and you're not coming out until you've done everything. Although saying everything is misleading, you're basically just photographing ghosts, because that doesn't require any form of interaction, although I'm not sure what the fuck a photograph of a moving chair is gonna prove. You navigate the house, collecting diary pages that uncover the story of the house and the puzzles that'll ultimately help you to escape. It's obvious straight away that an unreasonable amount of effort was put into the whole thing, like for example each page of the diary is entirely handwritten on paper with a pen. That's more effort than a lot of people would give their game, let alone their short flash game, and it's more effort than I've ever given anything. Surprisingly, there's only one jump scare in the entire thing, and even that's avoidable because the gameplay is centered around finding the scares, which means they have to be subtle and well-paced to present the game's challenge. Which, whether deliberate or not, are also two things that make the best, most effective scares in games. And let's be honest, with flash games, they fucking have to be when you're encased by this degenerate trash the whole time. Another big bigger benefit that comes with hidden horror elements though is every scene in the game looking like it's alive, in the scary sense, like it's constantly moving, like there's shit crawling everywhere just in the corners of your eye until you look and it stops completely. And basically I think I just completely smashed the reason I like this game so much perfectly right there, because other than that one aspect the game does well, you're given a score that, believe it or not, does something other than ruin the game's atmosphere. 
I'm lying, but to be fair, it does a really good job at that. It's not counted anywhere or towards anything, although that could just be because of how old it is, but there definitely was at some point, because if you stretch the aspect ratio out wider than it should be when it's embedded, the story, despite being barely one, is told instantly and then concludes by being told again. It doesn't even conclude, that was just it, there, being told again. The goal you're working towards isn't clear, it just sort of happens when you run out of things to click on and closes a lot like my teen years with a satanic ritual and an underperforming grade card. Haha. <laughs> Until the following Halloween Psionic games followed up with Ghostscape to the Cabin, improving and adding on what the previous game established with features like the ability to type in your name for the game to refer to you personally, making you feel like you're actually there and immersing you in the entire experience. That's if you actually choose your name, surprisingly Fuckhead didn't have quite the same effect. You're also equipped with a notepad you can write to, allowing you to record things like codes to locks, which yeah, also helps with the immersion because you're not having to leave the game for anything, but also again that's only if you choose to use it correctly. The style settled on was this whole colour splash situation, with the game being entirely black and white except for the colour red. The scariest colour. It's rare enough though that it's pulled off really well and doesn't get too annoying, plus the black and white and film scratch effect is a really good idea to convey the game being a prequel. Except for the small fact that it fucking isn't one. It reminds me a lot of Iceberg Interactive's atmospheric horror adventure game, specifically The Lost Crown. Suspiciously The Lost Crown, actually. Which is making me start to think that maybe this wasn't the beacon of originality on new grounds I thought it was, but I've already started the fucking video now. Thankfully though, we've still got our nice pre-rendered backgrounds, even if some are just photographs. That's a cop-out. And because of the game's setting being the deep woods, the each scene feeling alive effect I mentioned previously is essentially doubled with the addition of things moving around in the tree line watching you. 12 year old me was a big fan of that, especially at 1am when I couldn't sleep. This carries across to the gameplay equally as well and in the form of the game's only character being this old caretaker who I don't like looking at because I'm scared he's gonna move. Is that weird? That's not weird, that's definitely a bit weird. He gives you a list of random objects you have to wander about finding on his land, which is weird and pointless. Sure, your character character mentions that, but that doesn't count. Admitting something is bad doesn't make it good. Believe me, I try every video. And don't expect it to make sense in the end either. Spoilers by the way, we're jumping four minutes into the future. I'm sure you all give a fuck. The reasoning was that we almost died apparently had we not retrieved his skulls, hat and wine. Even I cannot think of a single way to defend that. The puzzles are improved and expanded on with both the metal detection mechanic for finding ancient obsidian spheres. Obsidian is not metal, how the fuck does that work? It doesn't. And the digging feature, which impressively is probably the most accurate portrayal of digging in a video game in that it's both boring and pointless. Upon digging and metal detecting enough though, you can turn into the cabin where the game closes with the old man granting you your one and only wish to take his photo, except I never asked for that once. Alright, that's enough I think. Ghostscape 3 D, which despite the name, look, and blind assumption I made three years ago, isn't a 3D remake of the first game, but the third game. It's also not playable anywhere online anymore, thanks to Unity discontinuing support for their web player on modern browsers. Wow, digital online only future of gaming, am I right? What did that last? One year before disappearing forever? Luckily though, the developer remastered the game with updated lighting, textures, and a couple of extra features, and made it available to download on itch.io, although it was always available on Android, but everything's always available on Android, it's just whether I want to stoop that low. Not only was the technology more than there for a fully 3D in browser game by 2015, but what the series has been so far and what it's done well would benefit most from being entirely 3D, and that is exactly what happened. The game returns to the style of the first, being set entirely within a single house, and speaking of house, because of the animated movements and camera angles in a small 3D space, it gives me serious House of the Dead vibes. Especially when you snap your neck, spinning round, see a ghost, and have to sprint through the menus to get your camera out in time to capture it. But because this game, unlike House of the Dead, uses horror mechanics in an attempt to be scary, which is a really nice way of putting it. It results in the weirdest fucking hybrid of a horror game with a horror theme I've ever played. Imagine Castlevania having jump scares, or the reverse of that Silent Hill 3's Haunted Mansion ride. 
Okay, I think I might actually be an idiot. Something else I really want to say is that although being fully 3D was a natural improvement that allowed the game's strongest aspects to evolve and improve past the limitations they used to have, I've realized only after playing this that 3D environments over pre-rendered backgrounds aren't always objectively superior, and in my opinion there's an effect that can't be achieved with 3D that can with 2D renders. It goes back to what I said about it being a style of its own, which is also why these games, if only visually, will hold up well into the future while this is showing its age after only two years. Like most things though, I'm fully prepared to admit that I'm probably wrong. In fact, I'll play it safe and do it in advance. The game also has a story. Well, so it's already the best. The important thing is that you're trapped in the house, because obviously, but you're quickly told in different ways that the only way to escape is to do the whole pentagram thing instead of finding it eventually and accidentally by yourself. Once again, there's the whole uncomfortable amount of effort theme throughout with the diary being entirely voice acted cassettes instead of written pages. I wish I'd never come to this place. Something's not right here, not real. They sound just unprofessional and spontaneous enough that they pass as being realistic, but that's only because, and let's be honest, that's definitely just the developer recording those in his fucking closet. It has that Star Trek effect, where the writing and acting is awkward, but so is that of everyone you know in real life, so it ends up benefiting the immersion more than anything, feeling too real. Depending on how many cassettes you collect, as well as side tasks you complete, like copyright infringing this painting of a flower, Really spooky, by the way. You're also given either a good or bad ending that actually concludes and is an ending. Oh yeah, right, that's not a compliment. A bad ending that has you die, and a good ending that has you die, but with access to this paragraph hinting at the Ghostscape series' eventual continuation in... Literally only I care. Which only leaves a bunch of the garbage to clean up that most people wouldn't even waste their time mentioning, but most people wouldn't have already spent 10 minutes covering three games not even worth mentioning. Despite me confusing the third game for a remake of the first, there was actually a remake of the first, so shut up. On Halloween night 2011, Ghostscape was re-released on Xbox Live's indie store and Windows phones, where believe it or not, it was played by a strangely large number of people due to Windows phones having literally no other games. Oh yeah? Name one. Exactly. Which is also why you'd have to forgive me for the stolen footage, sorry. The changes worth mentioning I'm scraping from this game not worth mentioning is the addition of two new areas, each with two new puzzles, one being a downstairs bathroom with a spot the difference portrait, and I was so turned off by that I don't even care. For some reason, the majority of assets, specifically ones I complimented like ghosts and paintings, were changed in favour of not just worse ones, but awful, laughably bad ones. And this seemingly unimportant fact ended up seriously ruining and destroying the entire series of games for me because, and obviously I can't prove this, I've got a really strong feeling that was because all of the original assets were either stolen or heavily sampled to the point that he needed to cover himself when releasing the game on a platform with a form of quality control. Sure, there's the possibility that this was an attempt at an improvement, but this guy has shown he knows what he's doing when it comes to 3D modeling and animation, so I don't buy that at all. I try not to dwell on the negatives though, which is a lie, and I'm gonna try my best to extract some message from this, a meaning. I'm gonna go with shining light on small unknown talented developers or just their forgotten games serve to keep a healthy level of competition in the industry and the potential that new games are given the fair chance they deserve. But more importantly, it just makes me feel better than everyone else.